Hello everybody, my name is King Kuwato. I hope you're having an amazing day, and of course it's highly requested. We're going to be going over the setup missions from beginning to end, the fastest way to do them, the most convenient, including the setup, the scope out, everything you need to do to get your Kyle Perico heist started. If you guys are new, consider subscribing as I do post content like this daily. And of course, I want to give a quick shout out to the 17 plus thousand people who have watched the Kaya Perico heist and the many people who leave like, subscribes, comments, whatever it is. I appreciate all of the support, all the questions, comments, concerns, whatever it may be. Thank you guys so much. I really do appreciate all the support and welcome all new Aztecs. As soon as you start up the scope out mission, of course, this is required. You're going to want to use the fast travel option in the Kosaka. I feel like a lot of people don't use that. It makes your life way more convenient and obviously you're going to take it to whichever location is closest to the Vellum. Now this mission will include using the plane and we'll fly over to Cayo Perico for the scope out mission. Once we get that started, everything will just snowball and we'll get it all rolling. I highly recommend going into this that you buy the Sparrow, which is the helicopter that can actually be stored inside of the Kosaka. I believe it's somewhere from 1 million to 2 million. Highly recommend it. I definitely think it's worth the price. If you guys don't have enough money, if you're just starting off Kayo Perico, then obviously you're not going to be able to buy it if you don't have enough money. That's completely fine. You can do this with whatever vehicle you want. When I first started, I used the dinghy, which is the free boat that comes in with the Kosaka. Regardless, I used to use the Deluxo. I used to use the Oppressor. Now I use the Sparrow. You can use the Buzzard. Whichever vehicle you want to do the setup mission, it doesn't matter. Like I said, the Sparrow can be stored inside of the Kosaka, so I find it super convenient. It's easy to store, it's easy to spawn, it's easy to use, it's super light so it's going to fly across the map, and it's one of the faster air vehicles in the game. Like I said, y'all, use whichever one you want, um, but I will refer to it as a Sparrow throughout this video. Whichever one that you get, whichever vehicle, just insert it there, but I will be using the Sparrow. Once you get inside the Vellum, of course, we're going to fly south, south, the very southmost peak of Los Santos. And of course, it'll take us through this little cutscene. There's been a glitch lately where it just kicks me out and it shows like I'm skydiving. Um, just don't touch anything. As soon as you get through this cutscene, we'll be on Kyle Perico. Now, of course, doing this mission, we're going to have to full sprint all the way over there for an hour to get to where we're going. I'm joking, of course, we're just going to be using this motorcycle right here to the left. This is super convenient, uh, dare I say optimized. <laughs> I know a lot of people in the setup mission, the finale of Kaya Perico, that video, by the way, it just reached over, I think it's like 18 or 19,000 views. It's hard to keep up because I mean, y'all have just been blowing it up. I wanna say thank you guys. I really do appreciate it. You guys have been showing so much support, so much love for it. And a lot of y'all have been coming into the Aztec Empire. So like I said, welcome to the Aztec Empire. I am King Kowaddle and I appreciate having you guys on board. So going over here, of course, follow this route that I go up to. Um, the whole optimized thing, a lot of people were like, oh, this isn't very optimized. Obviously, I wasn't speedrunning it. That was I actually did speedrun it a couple of videos later, but the route that I took was only to show you guys, as well as all the beginners, how to start up this without any stress. Following the route that I took, you guys saw I popped a wheelie once I got to that hill, and I did wait a couple seconds to make sure that guard isn't in the cone of vision, so he's not staring at the mountain that I land on so he could just catch me and kick me back to the spawn. All you gotta do is just follow this route and you'll be uh, optimized out of here, right? Like I said, y'all, if you get caught by any of the guards, you don't have to worry about it. It'll just go through a cutscene, you'll be back at the plane, and you could just do this as many times. I think if you get caught, like I think it's like six to eight times, then you'll get kicked off of Kaya Perico, but then you just start up the mission again and then follow the exact same steps all over again. You don't have to worry about it. It's not that big of a deal. I, I haven't met anyone who got kicked off uh, enough times to where they get kicked out of Kaya Perico, but there's no cooldown or anything. You don't have to worry about it. As soon as we're over here on the tower, you're going to be looking for the box. And if there's a guard on the foot base of this perimeter, it'll be somewhere in the top of the tower. But if there's no guard here, then it'll be on the bottom floor. Now this little hacking mission, I'll quickly explain it. You guys can see on the right hand side, those are the multipliers and the left hand side will be your numbers. The two tick marks are times two, the X is times 10, and the zero with the one through it is times one. You guys see, we're trying to match our bottom number with the top number and we'll use our multipliers to do so. You guys see two times one is two, four times two is eight, and three times 10 is 30. 
30 plus 8 plus 2 is 40 so we matched our top number with our bottom number and once we're done with the hack of course we'll open up our phone go to the sightseer app which is the purple app and then scroll over to the right three times that's right on the d-pad three times until you see basement in the top right that is our basement cam and we'll see our primary loot now this exact same setup like missions will be for the pink diamond the sensimito tequila which is what i got right there and then the ruby necklace the only one that's a little different is the bear bonds which will be all the way to the left of the camera if it's not in that little display case it'll be the bear bonds right it's easy to do like i said there's only one mission that's slightly different because of that but the bear bonds are super easy just follow the steps and um it'll involve going to the casino instead of getting the plasma cutter what i like to do is jump off of this building if you get caught by a guard or you just die whichever one works i think it's hilarious first of all but more importantly it makes it super convenient because it spawns you back at the vellum as soon as you get back to the vellum just return to los santos i know a lot of people are like oh well actually you should scope out the secondary links to see where your coke spawned if you're super pressed to get like what an extra hundred thousand dollars then that's fine just scope out and keep looking at the cams until you see where the coke is spawned and it'll mark it for you but if you don't want to do that i mean it, it saves you like 10 minutes right as soon as we're back at lsia just spawn in your sparrow or whatever vehicle you're gonna get back to the kosaka with and then of course once you're at the kosaka we could start the actual prep missions now you can do these in whatever order you want to i'm gonna start off with the long fin which is the vehicle we're gonna be using but of course, it's at your own discretion. I want to quickly mention, guys, if you're looking for the finale of the Cayo Perico from beginning to end and how to do the Elite Challenge, how to get the most optimized route, the most convenient route, whichever it may be, I highly recommend you guys check out my video that I posted a couple days ago. You guys have blown it up to over 19,000 views in a couple days. I want to say thank you. And of course, link will be in the description. The long fin is going to spawn at one of two potential police station setup missions. They're exactly the same. It's just the locations are different. You're going to need a truck cab to get the long fin out. So, of course, fly to one of two spawn areas on the map to get it. One thing to keep in mind is there are two different locations, like I said, for the truck cabs. One location will have two truck cabs and the other one will only have one. But this one vehicle you guys can see is not even a truck cab. It's the modified one, the one that comes with armor and the huge wedge in front of the vehicle. It makes it super easy to just throw vehicles off the road and it makes this next step just a little bit easier. But whichever truck cab you get, I mean, it's the exact same. It doesn't make that much of a difference. Whichever one you do is completely fine. It's just a matter of convenience. But like I said, I always go for the Phantom Wedge. Once you get over here, you're gonna back that thing up and get the long fin onto your truck. Just back up, you don't have to click any buttons. And then we'll start the lose the cops section of this, right? Now, I know people, before you even comment it, right? I know people are going to be like, oh, well, actually, you could just blow yourself up and lose the cops automatically. Yeah, I get it. And you can also do that. And you could just die and blow up and everyone will stare and laugh at you. But instead of doing that, in case for whatever reason, let's say you're in a public lobby, people are chasing you and you don't have to worry about spawning back in and people messing up your challenge or whatever it may be. You can actually also do the CEO, um, you know, hide yourself off the radar thing if you want the ability um, but it's not that big of a deal. If you're not a CEO, don't even worry about that. It's just a suggestion. And just drive the way that I'm going, right? You don't have to do this. Like I said, you can technically get to the location whichever way you want, but the location will only ping on your map once you lose the cops. You can lose the cops whatever way you want, whichever one's more convenient. But I'm gonna knock out two birds with one stone. And the way that I'm going will go into a tunnel and that tunnel will automatically lose the cops. All you have to do is basically follow these railroads that i'm going on these tracks are going to take you into a small little tunnel and that'll be followed up by a larger bigger longer tunnel now this little bridge thing is actually really cool like i said it'll lose the cops it'll hide anyone from you just follow it keep going there's only one straight way you can go and once you get off this little bridge section you will go off to the left side of these railroads right there is a street that intersects it just keep going past this fly past this keep going just a little bit more break through these two fences and then you'll be right there keep going just a little bit right there keep going you're good and there it is you guys see it's marked on the map a yellow ping just fly through it it'll take you through the parking little cutscene right here little five second cutscene and then go back to your kosaka because you're done with that first mission pat yourself on the back real quick drink some water and then we'll get back into our next equipment setup now we're gonna be going through the plasma cutter section. This is the aforementioned different part if you're doing the bear bonds. If you got the bear bonds primary loot in Cayo Perico, instead of doing the plasma cutter, it'll take you to um, the casino every single time to get these safe codes. 
All you have to do is go to the top floor, uh, find the dude. He's, he he's looks the same every single time. He has a cowboy hat on. You kill him, you take the safe codes, and then go back to the Kosaka. But of course, since we got the tequila, we're going to be taking a picture of this board to find the plasma cutter. Basically, you have to get all four corners in a picture. Um, I showed that a couple times. You guys saw that I missed it. And even though the box has obscured this last bottom left corner, you guys saw it was sufficient enough to send a Pavel. There's an option that shows in the bottom right corner. Just click that button and it'll send it to Pavel. He'll mark a location on your map, the next place you need to go to actually get the plasma cutter. And of course, we'll go over there. Now, of course, I like to use the helicopter to get over this. <laughs> Funny enough, that was a little oopsie. I actually like to use the oppressor. I like to just go on foot. It's just fine. You know, you go over here, grab the plasma cutter, of course, take out all the guards, use the RPGs, just blow them up, use a grenade launcher, uh, a ray gun, whatever you want to use. Just grab it, and once you're out of there, you'll be good to go. Go back to the Kosaka, of course, in whatever vehicle you want. I'm using the Sparrow. And once we fly back, that is the end of the first setup mission. Pat yourself on the back again, and we're going to be going into the Fingerprint Cloner. Now, the rest of these missions are going to be the exact same, regardless of whatever primary loot you're going to get. Like I said, the only one that's going to differ is the Plasma Cutter or the Safe Codes. Not that big of a deal. Once we get over here, of course, there is a warehouse that we're going to have to run into. I take out the cameras just to be silly goofy, but it doesn't change anything, right? Just run in, go in, go to the back of this room, and of course, there are four people in here. Make sure you shoot all of them. There's always that one dude that likes to hide. And once you kill all the guards, just run to the back. There is a computer right here. And we're going to hack into this computer. Say excuse me to this dude right here who likes to lean on this table. And of course, click confirm on all of the red letters to find the password. Super easy to do. You don't have to do it as fast as I did. There's no time limit to it. Just do it. Hack it. The password will always be Panthers, but you do it regardless, right? Once you exit out of here, Pavel will find the location where you need to go next. And of course, go over there. Over here, it's going to be in the archive. This time it's at Del Perro, the actual uh, the dock, the pier, whatever you call it. I'm not a scientist, right? Once you run in here, it's super easy to do, regardless of whichever location it's at. Run to the very back of this room. It'll be in this last circle of computers. And I like to just run into that U-shape because regardless of whichever one it's at, it's going to get picked up, right? So you don't have to worry about it. Once you get the fingerprint cloner, run back out, go to your Kosaka, and you're done with two of three equipment prep missions. This last one is going to be, of course, the cutting torch. Don't pat yourself on the back this time. We're going to be going over to the construction site. Now, the construction site, I believe there's three different ones. There's one on the building, the one that I'm going to, and then the one in the middle of the city. Regardless of whichever one you're doing, the setup is exactly the same. Convenient enough that the actual locations for these little hard hats are, I mean, this one's right here outside, so you don't have to get detected. But the other locations, I don't recommend you look for it. It's just going to eat up some time. And instead, you could just go guns blazing. I think there's only six guards. Just take them out and then, of course, run. You guys will see in a second. I actually alerted the guards anyway over a glitch. Um, but all you got to do is just run through the different toolboxes that have the green arrows pointing over it. And eventually, you'll find the blue cutter. Now, I couldn't find the cutting torch right. Like I said, I mean, it's completely random, whichever the box it's going to be in. And I stumbled across it right here. You guys will see inside the box, it'll be blue. And then, of course, it'll be prompted with the, the little clicky button. You click it, and you'll be on out of here. For whatever reason, it knocked the hat off of me, so it alerted the guards. So everyone started shooting at me. You could take them out, or you could just full sprint. It doesn't make a difference either way. They will be on you, but as long as you have an air vehicle or a fast enough vehicle... You fly on out of there, you drive on out of there, you swim on out of there, you teleport out of there, whatever you gotta do, go away, you'll be done with that setup mission. Finally, here over at the preps, we'll be going to our final one, which is the weapon loadout. Keep in mind that the weapon loadout, whichever one you do, it doesn't matter, right? Just choose whichever weapon loadout you wanna do. I always go with Conspirator because I like the gun itself, and of course you can choose a suppressor to throw on it later on. But regardless of whichever weapon loadout you choose, Aggressor, Conspirator, Crackshot, Intimidator, whatever one, choose it, and we'll be going on over here. Now there are a couple of locations that the weapons will spawn. Sometimes they'll be on top of a building, like the Penry's building. Um, you know, just go through the building, get the weapons, hack a computer. It's super easy to do. Nothing I haven't shown yet. But of course, I'm going to be doing the Meriwether HQ setup because I know everyone talks about this mission. I want to quickly say, right? Every single setup mission that I watched back in the day when I first started this would always say, oh, if you get the Meriwether HQ setup mission, you know, you're going to want to spawn out. You're going to want to delete the game uh, or download the game. 
come back into the lobby, get a different setup, keep doing that until you don't get the Meriwether one. It's not that big of a deal, and I even know in the comments, I'm just waiting to see the first comment that I see. Oh, you went with that Meriwether's. Ah, personally, I, it's not that big of a deal, right? As soon as you get over to the location, I cut out the floating part. The reason people don't like to do this mission is because you just follow a helicopter for like maybe three minutes, right, across the map, wherever it flies over to, um, to come here and, and clear out the, the Meriwether area. It's not that big of a deal, y'all. Just be patient, right? The, the million dollars that you're going to get out of this heist, it's going to be worth the three minutes that you're just floating on a helicopter, whatever you're going to be doing, right? Regardless, once you come over to the Avenger, don't blow up the helicopter yet until it tells you to. Clear out the area, run into the Avenger, and then, of course, just kill these two guards that are in here all the time. And, of course, run to the back right here. It'll say you picked up the weapons, and then go back to the area where you came from. Now, don't jump out the door yet. Come over here, grab a parachute, and then you can jump out to your heart's content. Like I said, y'all, that's literally it for the Meriwether HQ setup. You don't have to do the Meriwether if you don't want to. But I showed it because everyone just hates on it, and I love to make people mad. <laughs> of course, what I like to do is go into your little pause menu, go to your uh, services, go to Kosaka, and request your Kosaka as soon as you get to this area. The reason I like doing that, and of course, you don't have to, but the reason I like doing that is because it'll spawn your Kosaka the closest point of water to your current location. I do that every single time I fly over long distances because I don't like to have to fly all the way back to the very opposite end of the map. But regardless, as long as you get to your Kosaka, regardless of how much time it takes, you will be fine. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is it for the set of missions for the Cayo Perico heist. Thank you so much for watching. My name is King Kuwato. If you guys want to see the finale, like I said, link in the description below. Of course, we'll be using all of the things that we got in this video to go over that mission. I made it a couple days ago. It is up to date. To me, it's the most convenient route. If you guys want to, you know, use a different route, that's completely fine with me. But of course, that's going to be it for today. Have a great day, y'all. Stay safe. Take care. Peace. Audio. Subscribe to join the Aztec Empire as I do post content like this daily. You can expect some more GTA Online content in the next coming days. Let me know if you guys have any uh, complaints, questions, comments, or concerns. And of course, until next time, bye-bye.